Today we're going to talk about the setup of the Micro Air Jet Civ Model X2 basic mode of operation. The basic mode of operation is very simplified as far as the setup. What we must do is make certain that our vacuum power supply is attached. Most importantly, the power to the unit is attached to the back. Now, additionally, the vacuum hose gets connected to the port directly beneath the word vacuum. The next thing what we would do, and that is, while our screen on the front of the unit is a capacitive screen, it's very similar to your cell phone. Prior models were not that way. However, what we can do now is we can add a keyboard and or a mouse for easy navigation through the software. And they just simply are inserted in one of the three USB ports that are on the back of the unit. Additionally on the back of the unit is a CAT5 connection. That CAT5 connection allows you to network the unit. Another unique feature of the micro Sieve is while we use 200 millimeter diameter sieve screens, this is our standard sieve screen, and you'll notice that it sits down low into the instrument. We strongly recommend and we supply with each of the sieve screens an O-ring. This O-ring seal gives you a more positive seal between the actual sieve screen frame and the housing. Okay, And then our sieve cover fits down on top. Now in those cases where you're dealing with an 8 inch screen, there's some key factors. Notice the 8 inch screen fits higher in the higher profile, making the cloth further away from the bottom or the top of the wand. What we need to do, and this is strictly done at the factory because you notice, hand rotation of the wand voids the warranty because it's not a normal removal process. Okay. What I mean by that is most people think righty tighty, lefty loosey, it's inverse. Okay. So what we'll then do is we'll take the wand off and we'll put on the extended one. Now, as I mentioned, this is good for eight inch screens, the full height screen. It's also good for European screens. And it's also good for JIS screens, which is a Japanese standard screen. And then, and then we're back within the acceptable distance between the bottom of the cloth and the top of the wand. This will give you the best distribution. When using an 8-inch screen, we also have to, and we do supply, different sieve cover because you don't want the sieve cover to compress the material in the sieve screen. Short of that, we have sieve screens that range between 20 micron to 4,750 micron, all of which are ASTM built to E11 and we can also provide the ISO standard screens. Now, what we'll do is we'll power up the software, allow the software to go through its diagnostics and setup. It will have the basic screen arrangement. Now, after the instrument has fully loaded the software and has stabilized, we can now add in our vacuum pressure. Vacuum pressure, typically what we recommend here at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems is between 8 to 16 inches water column. So we'll just put in 12 for the moment. Sieving time. This is dependent upon the product. If the product is extremely friable, you may reduce your sieving time. Commonly here again at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems, we use 120 seconds. Now that those parameters have been set, what we'll do is we'll press start. The vacuum begins automatically. The wand begins to rotate after the vacuum pressure reaches a minimum of two inches of water. Notice how the display 
has stabilized plus or minus one inch within the 12 inches and the time is decreasing. If for any reason the, ma the machine must be stopped or paused, we simply press the pause button at which time we can clean off the cover should any material become adhered to it, put it back in place. Then we can press resume or abort. Now the only time you would press the abort button would be because there's really nothing left on the screen after a short period of time. So we'll just press resume. Once the time has reached zero or, as I mentioned earlier, you need to abort the system because there's nothing left on the screen, simply press the abort button. The vacuum pressure adjustment valve reseats itself, finds home, and then we're ready to start another test. Notice the pressure is already there and the sieving time is already there, so it does not have to be repeated each and every time. Let's talk a little bit about the admin page. This particular model is, is quite um, you know, diverse. Diverse from the standpoint that on this page it gives the operator the opportunity to change the actual language that's displayed in the software. What we'll do is we'll demonstrate changing to Spanish. Notice that the software restarts after it restarts, it will convert the words to Spanish. So if you have an operator that has Spanish language, or if you have an operator that has a diff any other languages, notice here, Hindi, Dutch, French, uh, German, Italian, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese, Portuguese, and Russian. These all can be selected, whereas your operator will have a much easier time in using the instrument. So let's take this back to English, and I'll go a little bit further. Okay, back to the admin page. The other thing that I did want to mention is that outside the US, it's common to use different units of measure for the vacuum pressure. So as you can see, you can select the different unit, either inch water column, pascal, millimeter mercury, inch mercury, or PSI. Simply highlight the appropriate one and you're ready. Next button we have here is, we're checking for the latest version of the software. Now in many cases, what'll take place is, as clients do, they call and they say, I want to confirm my software version over the phone, or let's say, you know, do I need to update my software? This is a mechanism or a device that will allow you to check your software. If there were, which there is not, a USB inserted into the back of the unit, it would then compare the installed version of software versus the version that's on the USB stick. So as you can see, there's no USB stick found, and as a result, we'll go back. The advanced mode. Advanced mode takes the unit three steps further. What it does is it allows the client to use a compatible balance and any printer, basically. So that now the information for the analysis is stored not only in the memory card, but as well as on a USB stick. However, it is password protected. We're going to close out of that for a moment. And factory settings. Notice here, factory settings requires a password as well. The reason why I bring it to your attention is because, quite frankly, factory settings are just that. They are settings that the factory should and need to have access to. And they're not settings that we recommend clients use. Okay, we'll close out of this. If we were connected to a network, the IP address would be displayed, and this is the MAC address of the unit. Those are mostly for our reference so we can identify and we keep record of every machine that is sold and, and shipped from Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems so that we can 
keep in touch with the machines and also be aware of what has been installed on it. Short of that, you might see a, a grayed out USB icon here. The reason why it's grayed out is, quite frankly, that's your confirmation that a USB jump drive, alias USB stick, is not attached. If it were, it would be bold black. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate your interest. And should there be a need to discuss the matter further, please contact us here at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems. <laughs>